Welcome everyone. Here we're going to find the distance between these two skew lines. So L1 is given uh, parametrically. This, this is the equations and these are the equations for L2. Now we're told that they're skew, so that means they're not going to intersect and they're also not parallel. You should verify that for your own sake, but let's um for now let's see how we can picture this to figure out the distance between these uh, skew lines. Now, let's try to draw two parallel planes. So let's suppose we have a plane right up here and there is a, another plane right here. So these two planes are parallel. Now, what we're going to do is draw this line. So uh, let's say L1 is contained on this plane. Let's call this L1. So, and the second line L2 is on this plane. So let's label this one L2. Now, clearly they're uh, skew, that means they do not intersect each other. So these are on parallel planes. Now let's suppose this is the normal vector of the plane, and this is the normal vector of this plane. So these normals are parallel. Now. The idea with this problem is to find the distance between them. So we're looking for this distance right here. So this is what we're looking for, that's D. Now, as you can see, this is also parallel to the normal of these planes. So how do we find this uh, uh, vector? Well, the first thing we're going to do is take the direction of both lines. So L1, its direction vector, let's call it V, is going to be, so these are going to be the components of our direction vector for L1. So you'll have two, four, negative two. And for L2, let's uh, find its direction. Let's call it V2. So the direction of L2 will be uh, these coefficients in front of its R. So we will have uh, its component as two, two, two. Now, if you do the cross product between these two vectors, you're going to get this vector right here, which we want. That will be perpendicular to both of these uh, lines directions. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll figure out how to figure out D. So to find this vector, we're going to um, I'll label it in the following way. So if I cross V1 with V2, I get a vector that's perpendicular to both of them. So we're going to set up the cross product uh, determinant this way. So we have the i hat, the j hat, and the k hat. And the second row, we're going to write down components of v1, which is 2, 4, negative 2. And the last row, we're going to fill in uh, components of v2. That's 2, 2, and 2. All right. So now let's do the cross product. Again, if you need help, more detailed information about cross product, feel free to check out the link in the description box. So this vector, it's going to be 12i hat minus 8j hat minus 4k hat. So when you do the cross product, you're going to get this vector. Now I'm gonna call this vector the normal vector. Let's call it that because this is the uh, normal vector because this vector is perpendicular to both V1 and V2. So that's this one right here. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Now we know that vector. Here's the next thing you're going to do. You uh, find a point that's in L1, find another point that's in L2, create a vector from L1 to L2. So this vector, let's, let's call this P. So if I wanna point on L2, well, I can uh, use the simplest point, for example, uh, the point one, one, negative two, that's on L2. So you can write P will have the coordinates one, one, negative two. Now I want a point in L2. So again, I can just take the simplest point, letting S be zero. So you'll have three, five, and one. So let's call this Q, which will have the coordinates three, five, one. Now we're gonna create a, a vector from P to Q. So the vector P to Q, is going to be, again, you do components of Q, subtract components of P. So three minus one, that's two, five minus one, that's four, 
and then one minus negative two, that's three. All right, so that's our vector uh, representing from P to Q. Now, so I know this vector and I know this vector. So let's project PQ onto D so we can find uh, what is the distance. So the next step you're going to do is to project, let's suppose um, we wanna find D. Well, D is going to be the magnitude of the vector P to Q times cosine of theta. Again, suppose theta is this right here. So if you project P Q onto D, this is where it's gonna become. It's the component projection onto that vector n. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both of these by the magnitude of n. So just like this. And now we're going to get our dot product. So on the numerator, we're going to get the dot product between the vector p, q, and n. And we're gonna take the absolute value of that divided by the normal magnitude of the normal vector. And that's pretty much it. That will give us our distance between these two lines. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we know our vector PQ is this one, and our normal vector is this one. If you want, you can write that component by. So this can be written as 12, uh, negative 8, comma 4. So let's do the dot product. So this will give us an absolute value. So PQ, that's going to be 2, 4, 3 dotted with the vector uh, n, the normal, so that's 12, negative 8, negative 4, and we're going to take the absolute value of that and divide that by the magnitude of n, so that would be the square root of 12 square plus negative 8 square plus negative 4 squared. All right, now we're ready to um, figure this out. So on the numerator, you're going to get um, absolute value of 24 minus 32 minus 12. And on the denominator, you're going to get the square root of 224. And then just uh, finish up simplifying this further. So on the numerator, you're going to get 20. Of course, we take the absolute value of it. And on the denominator, you're going to simplify. This is gonna be, um, so 224, we can just write that as 16 times 14. And then this will further simplify as 5 over square root of 14. So that's the distance between these two skew lines. I hope this makes sense. Take care.